Hi, I'm Adam. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to the iNimbleSoft channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at is it worth emulating a ZX Spectrum, purchasing an old ZX Spectrum, or building your own kit, such as the Harlequin 128K. Three things that I'm specifically going to be looking at are boot time, ease of loading games, and ease of typing your own program. So let's go ahead right now and look at the boot time for these machines. Wow, there really was some time difference there with the emulated ZX Spectrum taking 30 seconds to boot and the uh, existing retro hardware and the modern clone taking almost around the same time of this two seconds. Now, this two seconds, I don't 100% believe. I think some of this time was due to the HDMI recording equipment I'm using detecting the signal because when I plug these directly into the TV, they tend to be pretty much instant. So anyway, we can see we have two clear winners and that is the actual hardware. Now let's look at the ease of loading games. So on the emulated spectrum, I'll be loading some tap files that will be stored on the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi. On the ZX Spectrum Plus, so the actual real retro hardware, I'll be attempting to load a game through the tape interface and also through a DIV MMC interface. And that particular interface will be the one from ByteDelight.com. On the modern clone, so the Harlequin 128K, again, I'll be looking at trying to load a game from a tape. And also I'll be using a DIV MMC interface, only this is the future version from the future was 8bit.com. Okay, so let's go in and do that right now. To load any games in the emulated ZX Spectrum, you're gonna to have to copy your tap files to the RetroPie, and you'll find this on uh, the network share under RetroPie ROMs ZX Spectrum. To open a game, I'm gonna to wanna to go into the main menu, select File, and then Open, and then browse to the folder that I want, so in this case, RetroPie, and ROMs, and then scroll all the way down to ZX Spectrum. And then you can select your tap game to load. So in this case, I'm going to load Chucky Egg. And that was fairly straightforward. As you can see, the game is loaded. So let's have a quick play to see how the emulated ZX Spectrum handles the game. So up, down, left, right, jump and start. We'll go one player. Okay, so the first thing I notice is the playability on this game. It's really, really slow. Oh, and look at the time. It's just stayed on that and hasn't decreased at all. Just out of idle curiosity, let's just try the other Sinclair ZX Spectrum emulator that's available on RetroPie, just to see how this handles the game. So I'm going to go into the menu again, and I'm going to browse to the Chucky Egg tap file and load this. Oh, it actually looks like it simulated a tape loading then. Okay, so it loaded almost instantly, and uh, the graphics again looks really, really good on this. So let's set some keys up, down, left, right, jump, and then start. And again, let's go for one player. Okay, so the speed, it's, it's fantastic. The playability is really nice on this. Although I'm looking at the time again and for some reason it just doesn't seem to be moving. Uh, it's, really, it's, it's really quite nice and fast to play. So let's try loading on the ZX Spectrum Plus, the actual retro hardware. So typing in load, quote, quote, press enter and ah. 
it's not actually loading anything from the tape and it looks like the color has stopped working on it. Hmm. I suppose this is one of the downsides of having an old machine, things will break. Let's try the retro hardware machine again. So the ZX Spectrum Plus, but this time with a DIV MMC to see how it handles this. Okay, I appreciate the color is gone on this, so we're not testing that at the moment. We're just testing ease of loading games. So let's scroll down to the Chucky Egg tap file. And that was straight away. Fantastic. Now, I'm not going to play this game because I've played it before on the retro hardware. Please check out my other video where I do this. Link in the description. So let's see the ease of loading games on the modern clone. So type in again, load, quote, quote, enter. And I think I'm going to have to speed this up. Otherwise you'll be hanging around for two minutes waiting. So that loaded successfully. Uh, the graphics, again, it looks quite nice on this. Okay, so let's remap the keys. Up, down, left, right, and jump. And then start. Let's go for one player. Okay, so it's nice and responsive. It actually plays quite nice and well. It's fast. One thing I've noticed though is that the time also seems to be stuck on this as well, just like the emulated game. Now testing the DIV MMC, ease of loading games on the Harlequin ZX Spectrum clone. So we just come straight down, load the Chucky egg file, and as you can see, it loads straight away. Up down, left, right, jump. Start and one player, but I don't think it's really worth playing this as you've already seen uh, it being played on this machine. So let's just jump out of here now. So as you saw, loading the game on the emulated ZX Spectrum was fairly straightforward. Just point to the directory that it's saved in and boom, it's loaded. With the retro original, ZX Spectrum Plus that I had. As you saw, I had some problems. Not only did I have problems with the color, it had stopped working, but I was also unable to load a game through a tape. Now, this is one of the pitfalls, I suppose, of having such an old machine, things will break. I then connected the DIV MMC from ByteDelight.com and the game loaded superbly. Absolutely nothing wrong with that, apart from obviously the color had um, stopped working on the computer. It's something I need to uh, look into and fix, and maybe that becomes another video, who knows. Uh, let's look next at the Harlequin 128K. Okay, so I was able to load a game successfully from a tape on that. Obviously it takes a while to load from a tape, so I sped that up for you all to see. And then I used the DIV MMC Future from the futurewas8bit.com to load a game. And uh, as per the other DIV MMC, it just loaded straight away. So that's fantastic. In terms of loading games, which one of these machines wins? I think I'm going to go with the Harlequin 128K. The reason being on this is the older machine, actually, as you saw, it stopped working. I had some problems with it. And the modern machine, it's, well, it's modern, it's new, it hasn't worn out yet. So I think I'm gonna go with that. And next, what I'm going to look at, it's the ease of typing your own program into the computer. So let's jump in and have a look at that now. Let's have a look at ease of typing a program on the emulated ZX Spectrum. I'm gonna go for a really simple one here. So 10, print. Hmm, first problem, where is the quote? On my keyboard, it's shift and two because that is a British layout. And it is not that obviously in the emulated machine. Ah, control and P. So we can go along like this. So it does make it a little bit more difficult to type without the extra um, words and characters on the keyboard there. So let's have a look at ease of typing a program actually on the retro hardware itself. So I'm using a ZX Spectrum Plus, as you can see from the picture, 
the keys have got all the information on, so this should make it quite a bit easier. Okay, so 10 print. I know where the quote is this time because it's on my keyboard. I nimble sloth dot com and quote. 20 go to 10 and run. So this was fairly straightforward on the ZX Spectrum Plus. Now let's have a look at ease of typing a program on the modern clone. So this is the Harlequin 128K in a replica 48K rubber keyboard case. So again, the keyboard has got all the markings on so I can see instantly where the quote is. And that was nice and easy. Although typing on this rubber keyboard doesn't feel as nice as a modern keyboard. Dot com quote 20 go to 10 run okay fantastic so that worked well as well with the emulated ZX Spectrum the first major hurdle I came across was the keyboard. Now I displayed a picture in the video there for you to see, and as you can see, it's just a regular PC keyboard. So the main problem is all the extra little bits that are printed on the ZX Spectrum keyboard just weren't there. So trying to find a quote uh, when I was doing the line 10 print iNimbleSloth.com, now finding the quote was quite tricky. I actually had to end up looking over at one of the other keyboards from my ZX Spectrum Plus and also my Holoquin to actually see where the quotes were because on the PC keyboard, this is shift and number two and it isn't that on the Spectrum. So that's a failure for me in, in my mind. With the ZX Spectrum Plus, yeah, that keyboard was quite nice. It wasn't as nice as a modern keyboard to type on, but everything was laid out and I could find the keys I wanted quite easily. With the modern, Harlequin 128K Spectrum clone. This was the rubber keyboard, so like the old 48K uh, Spectrums. I didn't find this keyboard as easy to type on as a modern keyboard, but I did like the fact that all the little bits of extra text are different colors on there. I found that a little bit easier to see where the extra commands were, such as the print and the go to. So I'm gonna actually go with that keyboard as the overall winner. So what conclusion can we draw from this? or what conclusion did I draw from this? Uh, I think that whilst loading up an emulated ZX Spectrum is maybe okay to quickly try out something, it's not going to beat the real thing, okay? We all love the real thing. The purist in me is saying you must have the original computer as well to play with. However, the purist in me is also saying, do you really want to wear your Sunday best to paint your house? No, you don't. You put on some uh, decorating clothes. So in that case, the purist in me is saying, do I really want to use such an old computer every day for just playing about on and letting the kids bash about with the keys? No. So in that case, I think the Harlequin uh, wins overall because as your everyday computer, it doesn't matter if it takes a little bit of a battering. You know, all the parts are new and I can purchase them relatively easily if I did need to repair anything. And it was just such a reliable machine throughout the test. So. If you disagree, you know, let me know in the comments down below. If you've got a really old computer that you love and you use every day and it's never let you down, please let me know. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye. One quick thing that I forgot to add. Uh, it wasn't something that I was going to be looking at directly. It's just something I've suddenly thought about at the end and that's the cost of these devices. So if we're looking at emulating, the cost of a Raspberry Pi is somewhere in the region of 30, 35 pounds ish thereabouts. We're going to be looking at a case. What's that? Maybe five to 10 pounds and an SD card. Okay. A micro SD card, 32 gig at the moment on Amazon. I think they're about 10 pounds, something like this, 10 or 12 pounds. Uh, then we have got the actual hardware, the retro hardware. Now the cost of this, I'm not an expert in this at all. Okay, um, relatively new to it, and I've seen massive variations in cost. I just think it depends what day of the week it is, who's on eBay, if that's where you're sourcing the parts from. Uh, they seem to be skyrocketing sometimes. 
So then we can look at the cost of the clone. Now the clone seems to be fixed, obviously. There's only a few sellers selling these. I bought mine from bikedelight.com and it was a fixed price and that was it. So what can we deduce from this? Taking the prices into consideration and what um, I previously looked at, I'm still personally going to go with the clone for the everyday machine. But again, the purist in me is saying I need an original one to have in my collection. Need is a strong word though. I need water, I need air, and I need somewhere to live. I don't really need a computer. Okay, I, I want a computer in my collection. So I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, bye.